It's an exhibit that was almost lost to the ages. Almost. Rita Braver has a story that's part history, part mystery. Look closely at this three-dimensional scene, featuring a pair of exuberant dancers. You've been enslaved for 250 years, and now you are free, and this is jubilation and joy. It is, according to Professor John Teal Robinson, director of the Legacy Museum at Alabama's Tuskegee University, the moment of emancipation. It's a moment that's pregnant with possibilities. The diorama was created for the American Negro Exposition, mounted 80 years ago this summer to celebrate African-American achievements since the end of slavery. Known as the Black World's Fair, it was held at the imposing Chicago Coliseum. If you wanted to understand something about African Americans in 1940, it was, it was there for you at the exposition. There had never been anything like it. President Franklin Roosevelt pushed the button that turned the lights on opening day. There were all kinds of exhibits, including a Hall of Fame honoring notable African Americans. Jazz legend Duke Ellington, shown here in an undated performance, entertained the crowd. And at the center of it all was a huge hall featuring 33 dioramas. What were they trying to show? That African American people have contributed enormously to this country's development and wealth. Made of wood, plaster, and masonite, with human figures, often clay or carved wood, they portray scenes from black history. Matthew Henson, one of the first men to reach the North Pole. The death of Crispus Attucks, a dock worker believed to be the first colonist killed in the revolution. And the landing of enslaved people from Africa in Virginia in 1619. How can you not be swayed by, by what you see here? These dioramas are all recently restored. How that happened is quite a story. The 33 dioramas were all created under the direction of Charles Dawson, a noted commercial artist. After the exposition, Dawson brought 20 dioramas to Tuskegee, where he'd once been a student. What happened to the other 13 is an enduring mystery. But over the years, those 20 fell into disrepair. And Robinson believed it was essential for African Americans to help restore these works portraying their history. But there was a problem. There are just not very many African Americans who work in the field of museum conservation, are there? There are not. And so it was mandatory that I work to try to figure out a way for African American students to learn this discipline. So Robinson helped launch a groundbreaking program, enlisting some top art restoration centers like this one run jointly by Winterthur Museum and the University of Delaware to introduce black students to the field of conservation by working on the dioramas. Roger Blakemore has spent months on this one, featuring the Harlem Hellfighters of World War I. Toslin Ware is just starting out. You're studying this now because you want to be one of the people that spreads the word? Yes, definitely. Really? Yes, I think that it's truly imperative that we just understand our history. If you don't understand where you're coming from, it's very hard to grasp where you're going. They were such heroes. Professor Joyce Hill Stoner has helped students restore four of the dioramas. So does it make a difference? that African Americans are working on art made by other African Americans? Once they have been lured into the field and really love it, the answer would be no, it doesn't have to be. But when you're trying to get people excited, you want to strike a chord. 
and the dioramas struck a chord for Lestartia McGarity. For me, it's the history within and the history surrounding them. Today, she holds a prestigious conservation fellowship at Washington's National Gallery of Art. But earlier, as this time-lapse video shows, she painstakingly restored this diorama for her master's thesis, Benjamin Banneker, surveying what would become Washington, D.C. Why is he a key figure? Because he is sort of an oddity in American history that has been lost. A free African-American that was a surveyor, an author, a farmer, an astronomer. When the restoration was complete, McGarity helped drive the diorama back to Tuskegee, straight to John Teal Robinson. What was it like for you when Lestartia brought you that Benjamin Banneker diorama? The circle was complete. You couldn't ask for anything better. And even as she presides over the restoration of Tuskegee's 20 dioramas, Robinson is still wondering what happened to the other 13. Do you hope that now that we're having this conversation, somebody's going to say, hey, wait a minute, we have one of those things in our basement. I never knew what it was. Absolutely. <laughs> I hope so. I do. I hope that this unearths all kinds of things and it will help complete the story.